Destination Euriot is the morning program. I'm Rowan Hand. I have the joy of introducing you to uh, Nina Daly. Hello, Rowan. And how are you? From the Southern Trust, based in based in Craig Avon, Avon. and right. you've come down to. Uh, the verdant pasture lands of Newry this morning to tell us about Child Safety Week. I have, I have. Within the, within the, within the Trust. You're very welcome, Nina. Thank you. Uh, child Safety, I have all my children safely up, but now I have grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we need to be aware of. Why? Is there, a, is there a big demand for an awareness of child safety at the moment? Or is it not something that people actually know about naturally and take care of naturally? Well, some aspects I think parents and, and people who, who look after children do um, do make efforts to keep children safe. Um, but I think it's one of those issues that constantly needs reminding of. Um, it's a big issue because there are so many different behaviours and there's so many different products and other things that can put children at risk. And it's something that's really always evolving. So. The work that I do um, for the Southern Trust um, is to provide advice, information, resources um, and support really for other people either in the Trust itself or that work in the community looking after children so that they can cascade advice and information. Nice word that. To, yeah, well, <laughs> it <That's> is. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, because we wouldn't have the resources to, um, you know, reach every parent yes, ourselves. Yeah. So we rely very much on people like health visitors, yeah. our midwives, our nursing staff. Give me bullet points as to what can mm. endanger a child in the area of your concerns. Okay. What are they? Well, probably one of the main accident types to affect young children is falls in the home. Mm. So you're talking about very um, early stages even where, you know, a mother maybe places a child um, on a sofa or a bed to change it's nappy oh, yeah. and you could easily turn around for a moment and the child would would be you know yes. could fall on the floor so there's falls like that there's falls um, you know from parents maybe putting things like uh, car seats and baby bouncers on kitchen tables or oh work surfaces mm. you know things that parents do maybe not meaning to mm. um, sort of put the child at risk but because it's maybe easier for them or maybe they're trying to keep eye contact mm -hmm. with the child mm -hmm. and children can change and develop very very quickly and they can go from a stage where maybe they can't mm. roll or move yes. to a point where they're quite active and that can happen so quickly so we've got falls falls is a big next issue next one the next type of um, issue uh, we would look at would be things like burns and skulls. So things like oh hot drinks, um, bath water, um, you know, hot food, hot drinks as well, and um, that the child would be consuming themselves. Mm. Um, other issues would be around blind cord safety, which is um, an emerging oh, issue. We had we had that as an yes. emerging. Uh, child died in we did. Bridge, That's right. right. That yes. happened last year. Mm. I know it's a it's a terrible tragedy, and it's a, an accident that can happen ever so quickly. Mm. So it's things um, like that, you know, products that we have in our home where people aren't aware that they pose a risk or a threat mm. to children that we try to research and provide advice and then also mm. provide resources. You see, children would see the blind cord as yes. a plaything. They like, do. Just drawn it around, round the hand, right? Yeah. And then and catastrophe. It's, that's it. It can happen so quick. Um, I think a couple of years ago there was a, a launch in Belfast um, to campaign on this issue and a grandfather had spoken to a coroner when his grandson died oh my and it can take 18 seconds for a child to die mm. if that cord gets around its neck so it's you, can't, yeah, please go ahead. you no. can't watch a child no. you know every single second of every day so that's why environmental modifications have to be made within I love that. the home. Environmental modifications <laughs> including getting rid of the cords there's yes. a long sort of uh, like a pole that you turn at the bottom yes. it opens and closes opens and closes That's you right. can't get that wrapped around you no you can't so listen think about environmental modifications That's it. take that a wee stage further then because mine okay. is the pole get that instead of the cord yes but you're going to tell them of other things well, yes there's other products as well and um, for blind cord safety which um, keep the the cord tight against the wall so a child can't get the cord anywhere around their neck and then if we look at other accident issues as well one of the things that we're um, campaigning on this week is around childhood poisoning accidents oh God. Um, yeah. we have a, a workshop tomorrow which is taking place in Portadown we have mm. about 25 um, different staff come into that mm. and they're going to learn about 
things that um, pose a poisoning risk to children. Um, they'll learn about why children need to be protected because at that stage, young children in particular are very curious. They're exploring their environment with their hands and their mouths. They want to get into everything. So things that are quite innocuous or harmful or harmless to us can be very, very dangerous to a child. You also have to consider then as well that a child is much smaller than an adult. So even if it consumes a small quantity of something, that's still a lot to put into a small body. May so I tell people something here, and mm -hmm. you as well, if I may, Nina. Mm -hmm. uh, my wonderful oldest daughter is now in her 40s, a wonderful nurse. She was a midwife as well. Mm -hmm. she, now has a, um, she now goes out in the community and looks after people. Uh, she's had six, five children herself. When she was that size, she walked into our bedroom mm -hmm. uh, from her own room and she was, she was wobbling from oh. side to side. And there's a sticky substance around her lips. Yes. Sweet smelling, pink colored. It wasn't Calpol, was it? It was exactly mm. Calpol. Yeah. The child consumed the Calpol. Yeah. So Calpol is attractive to them. Very much so. Um, medicines would be one of the most common yep. things that children do take um, by mistake. Um, so it's very important that things like tablets um, are not kept in handbags or in bedside lockers, things, you know, in areas where they would be accessible. Um, and then also things like um, household products, bleaches and things like that. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we're campaigning on today is around the danger of liquid tabs, which um, are sort of jelly-like uh, detergent capsules. Oh, God, yes. Um, I would eat one of those myself. I know, they look pretty good, don't they? Um, but that's exactly the problem uh, to children, is that they look very attractive. Um, sometimes they smell like fruit. So it's quite confusing for a child to look at that and think, well, you know, maybe that looks a bit like an ice pop or, you know, something that they could drink. And these can be very, very dangerous to young children. Um, they contain very harsh cleaning chemicals. And if they're consumed, um, then it can damage a child's airways, um, you know, which, which can actually swell and cause respiratory, um, you know, dangers. Am I right in thinking that if anything like this, mm -hmm. anything untoward yeah. is swallowed, yeah. it's a, an immediate 999? Well, it should be, yes. Yeah. So you yeah. should definitely Don't seek advice. Don't hang yeah. Because, you know, it's, a, it's too big a risk. To That's take. it. Yeah. And even, you know, even if the child doesn't swallow these um, substances, even um, if they get contact with them on their yes. skin, because they're easily bitten into, yeah. um, oh and the child might squeeze them, and yeah. then the, the contents spill out. Yeah. Um, so children have damaged their eyes and damaged their skin mm. as a result of coming if into contact consumed, with these. If it's consumed, if it's taken internally, yeah. should we try immediately as 999? Try and induce vomiting. No. No. No, that's actually a very wrong thing to wow, do. Wow, I would have thought that was right. I no. know. No, the, Tell the people why. Well, because if a child has gone something, something that maybe is corrosive and dangerous to its, its airways its, or its, even its food pipe, um, then by vomiting, you're, you're actually it back up bringing again. it back up again. So you're re-exposing um, the yeah. child twice to the poison. Yeah. Um, what should be done is that you do call 999. Um, yeah. And if you can, whether it's a liquid tab or medicines or a household cleaner, if you have time, try to take a sample of the product yes. that the child has consumed with you. Sample. Um, and then that way, you're able to give the healthcare staff treating the child the information that they need. Give them a heads up on it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, there is a National Poisoning Information Service which um, you know, provides advice on, know. on how to then yeah. treat and remedy any you've poisoning. An, you've another thing there in another yes. little product, what is that? Well, these are um, called poppet locks. They're um, excellent little um, cupboard locks um, that we will be giving out to um, the staff who attend the workshop tomorrow. So these devices then um, will be passed on to families in the community and it means that they can select maybe a kitchen cupboard um, in their home where they can store you know, things like household bleach and the liquid tabs or washing powders, yes. anything that would be dangerous. Um, there's a lot of things, a lot of difference made sometimes between what's a lock and what's a catch. Yes. Um, some things that um, even, you know, would be considered to be childproof or foolproof um, are not always so um, with children. Mm. Children have been shown to be able to open even child-resistant locks, you know, you know the type that you have to press down yeah, and yeah, twist yeah, yeah. at the same time. They're child-resistant. 
They will they're slow a child down, but they're not, not childproof. Yeah. But these locks actually were, are very effective. You have to have the pin in to order to get yeah. it open. So they're they mean that you can secure part of your, your home yeah. and put anything dangerous away. It's about, I suppose, it's about people mm. uh, taking the trouble, taking the time That's to prioritise the well-being of their children. That's it. It's a constant thing, you know, because um, you're constantly bringing new things into your home. Take, for example, even now, one of the new dangers we have around um, childhood poison is the refills used in electronic cigarettes. What are, I hate those things. Well, I've never had contact with them yet, You're, but they seem to be yeah. very popular. Um, you know, they are being seen maybe by some as a as a no. healthy alternative to smoking, but I think no. the jury is out on that really at so, the moment. Big time. You know, yeah. but um, again, the refills that are used in those devices are very brightly coloured. Oh, you yeah. know, likely to be stored in people's handbags or, or jacket yeah. Come pockets. Come into my parlour, says know? the spider to the fly, and the child is trapped. That's it, exactly. Absolutely. And they contain a very, very high quantity of nicotine, and nicotine is very poisonous mm. in small doses. So, yeah. you know, we have to constantly keep people and parents aware of the things that they have in their home as well as the standard kind of you know awareness and and risk assessment that they need to do in their home and back again then to the whole environmental modification yes, or basically yeah. take the time to take make your time. child that's the answer and your it. home safe and do take the time to go to your event tomorrow yes definitely which is a road show well it's it's going to be more like a workshop a workshop so it'll be what um, time do you want to see them at well, it's starting at about half nine. Um, half past nine in the morning, yes, where? In Portadown Health Centre. Portadown Health Centre on Tuesday the 24th of June. That's right. Portadown Health Centre, half past nine, and they'll be there all day with you. Well, we'll be there until about lunchtime. Lunchtime. Yeah. And it's, it's one, it's, if you're a parent, especially if you're a young parent, without, look, all parents, try and get there tomorrow because the well-being of your children really depends on your carefulness and your carefulness is accentuated by your knowledge very much and so. once you have the knowledge and the care that equals a good fighting chance for the child that's it thanks yeah. for coming in not at all Pleasure. how do they Thank contact you. you if they want to contact you well we can be contacted by um telephone or by email email what's the email um, my email address is nina which is n-i-n-a n-i-n-a dot d-a-l-y d-a-l-y dot daily at southern trust at southern trust dot h-s-c dot h-s-c n-i n-i dot net dot net mm -hmm. there you have your website we do um we have a website it's all the w's um southern trust southern trust dot h-s-c dot h-s-c n-i n-i dot net dot net and if people go in there's a healthy living section on the website and we have an accident prevention page um, at the very top of that. Nina Daly, nice thank meet. you for joining us this morning. Not I wish you very good success tomorrow. Coming thank moment, you. really, thank Mr. You. Tommy Sands. Thank you.